this week's Bible lesson, the week of December the 6th, our Bible lesson comes from Malachi chapter 3. Uh, Malachi is the uh, last of the Old Testament books. Malachi is considered a minor prophet. It's a short four chapters and even then brief chapters. So it's an easy read in the sense of uh, time consumption. You can read it through. You can read it through in a matter of minutes. It's not an easy read when you consider it in light of its content. Malachi is uh, writing uh, his ministry and the record of his ministry relates to events uh, in the 400s uh, BC. The uh, group, uh, a group of exiles have returned from uh, Babylon uh, and have begun the task of rebuilding Jerusalem. The temple has been rebuilt to some degree. Uh, it is not the majestic temple uh, of the temple that was built following David's rule, uh, but it was a temple nonetheless. And so the uh, religious practices uh, around the temple had been restarted. Offerings were, burnt offerings were again being offered at the altar. Uh, the, the priest and their uh, work had begun. Uh, Malachi is a contemporary to Nehemiah. So if you go read Nehemiah's work, uh, you'll find overlapping uh, issues uh, both of them address. Um, they both, Nehemiah and Malachi, uh, speak against uh, the lack of reform in the religious practices of many of the people. Uh, they speak against the um, inappropriate work of the priests. Uh, they were profane. Uh, someone described them as profane and mercenary. Uh, there were problems with marriage in that many of the uh, Jewish men were marrying uh, local women, that is, uh, those uh, neighbors to uh, the Jews who uh, had populated the land, especially during the absence uh, of the Jews after the great uh, exile. Uh, Jewish men were marrying local women. Uh, this was not so much uh, an issue of inter, um, um, intermarriage racially, but the problem was religious. Uh, the local women, if I can refer to them that way, the local women came out of a uh, background of idolatry. The local religions did not worship the one true God, but were idolatrous um, religions. They were generally fertility cults in that there was a great deal of emphasis on the, um, the interaction between uh, gods and goddesses. And of course, this was acted out by the human adherence of these religions. And so Jewish men were marrying the local women and as a consequence being uh, tempted away from the worship uh, of the one true God. Not only was it an issue of uh, them marrying, but in many cases, it was obvious that the men were setting aside their Jewish wives and uh, taking in a uh, local uh, woman as a replacement wife. And so therefore, uh, violating their covenant uh, with their wives, which was seen as part of their covenant with God. So this was a major uh, issue. Uh, there then was also great pushback from Malachi uh, regarding the non-payment of their tithes and offerings. These were essential for the not only the building of, but the keeping up of the temple and of the religious practices. And then in uh, the end of uh, Malachi, and there's a great condemnation of the way that the rich were treating the poor and the, and the powerless. As we begin reading the 
uh, book of Malachi, in the first few lines, uh, Malachi referred to uh, his words, what he was given by God to take to the people. He referred to these words as a as the burden uh, of the word of the Lord. Uh, and literally that term burden is uh, carries the idea of that which is lifted up. Uh, this word often was used to relate to a prophecy of judgment, uh, a very heavy condemnation against the wicked. Uh, some translations translate the term as oracle. Uh, others use the term proclamation. Regardless of the uh, translation term used, Malachi begins with the claim that what follows uh, is a proclamation of the word of the Lord. This came directly from God, according to Malachi. The message of this Old Testament book is addressed specifically to Israel. Uh, since the fall of the northern kingdom of Israel in 722 BC, uh, the name Israel was used for the entirety of what we would call the Jewish people, the, the people who were understood to be the covenant people in that covenant relationship with God. And so this community following the exile was made up of people who had been citizens of the northern kingdom as well as uh, the southern kingdom, or at least their their descendants. And so Malachi speaks to Israel, not concerned with northern or southern kingdom, because the prophets, for the most part, never accepted the division of the kingdom after their uh, civil war. And Israel was Israel. And Malachi speaks uh, of the, the privilege of the people in their relationship with God, but also the spiritual pollution in their lives because of their wickedness. Uh, one writer uh, gives us a six-part breakdown of the, of the book. It begins with charges against Israel because of their uh, insensibility uh, to God's love. Uh, God loved them, and they they did not accept that. They argued against the love of God. If God loved them, why were they having any problems? Would be an oversimplification. A uh, second issue: the the priest in Malachi one six on into the early part of chapter two, uh, the priests come under great condemnation. They are reproved by Malachi because of uh, the way they were not doing their job or the way they were doing their job, but it was not doing it appropriately. Uh, part of their uh, specific condemnation comes in their willingness and their tendency to offer inferior offerings on the altar. These would have been offerings that were brought uh, by the people. Um, we don't know if maybe the some of the priests swapped out the, the good offerings for inferior offerings so that the priests could keep the better ones. But regardless, the priests were responsible that what was offered on the altar was the most perfect sacrifice possible. If it's an animal sacrifice, it should be an animal without defect. And that was not happening. Uh, in chapter one, we read... Uh, a son honors his father, this is verse six, and a servant is master. Then if I'm a father, these are the words of the Lord, if I am a father, where's my honor? And if I'm a master, where's my respect, says the Lord of hosts to you? O priest who despise my name. But you say, how have we despised your name? You are presenting defiled food upon my altar. But you say, how have we defiled you? And in that you say, the table of the Lord is to be despised. When you present the blind for sacrifice, blind animals, is it not evil? And you present the lame and the sick animals, is it not evil? Why not offer it to your governor? Would he be pleased with you? Or would he receive you kindly, says the Lord of hosts? 
But now will you not entreat God's favor that he may be gracious to us? With such an offering on your part, will he receive any of you kindly, says the Lord of hosts. Which the implication is that the choice animals uh, that should have been brought were not being brought or they were not being uh, offered. A third character or a third uh, subject that is treated, we've already mentioned the mixed marriages, the, the wrongs that were done to Jewish wives. And then in the end of chapter two and the beginning of chapter three, there is emphasis placed on the coming of Messiah and the forerunners uh, that would introduce Messiah. Chapter three deals with the reproof the end of chapter three, reproof for the ties that they were uh, withholding. Uh, and then there is the contrast between the godly and the ungodly at that time. And in future judgment, uh, there was the call for the people to return to uh, the law of God. So with this as background, uh, Sunday, we will look more closely at Malachi chapter three, the first six verses and we'll consider the teaching there about Messiah's coming, not only what that had to say to the people of the 400s BC, but what that has to say to us, a uh, contemporary 21st century congregation. I hope you can be part of that conversation, if not in person, uh, then by electronic communication. And before we close our time together, I would like to spend some time with you in prayer as we pray for those who've requested such prayers. I'll put the prayer list in front of you. These are prayer concerns that are shared with us by the individuals or by family and friends. So join me in praying for these folks. Lord, we come to you in this very uh, sacred time, time when we can joined together uh, spiritually, even if we're not in the same room, uh, and we can agree to lift up these sisters and brothers to you, their situation, some of them facing physical needs, other concerns that are beyond the physical body. And we hold them up to you knowing that you know the very depths of their needs beyond our ability to know but also knowing that we express our faith and confidence in you uh, when we hold up our friends to you. And so we do. We continue praying for Linda Gowan. Pray that uh, the medication that's been adjusted will be effective in treating uh, the latest issues that she's facing. We pray for Gary Lytle. We continue to pray for Marlene Wilson. Thank you for recovery and pray that it will continue. We held up Fran Kirby to you. We pray for Jim and Barbara Berry and Grady and Sandra Reinhardt. We held up Oscar Brown and Pete Miller. We pray for Joe Ballinger. Pray for Susan Paris, Lord, guide doctors and let them know the right diagnosis and the right treatment for her voice issues. We pray for Kay Ballinger as she uh, completes a surgical cycle. We pray, thank you that these have been able to be done effectively and pray that healing from them will be uh, complete and that she can get into a rehabilitation setting and, and, and find success and be able to restore to mobility and active life. We pray for Annie Laura West, be close to her today, and for Jane Alexander. We pray for Grace Settle as she goes through some physical therapy and pray that she will be able to be stronger. Pray a similar prayer for Janice Taylor. She continues to recover from knee surgery. Thank you for the success that she's made, and we pray that that will uh, continue. We pray for John Kirkland, for Lisa Hines. We pray for Russell and Hazel Dietz. Thank you for sending them to us and us to them, and we pray that you'll be close to them today. And Freddie Mitchell, as 
uh, he recovers from some medical treatment, uh, give him complete recovery, we pray. And Lord, for those in nursing home, we pray for Ruby McDowell and Ramona Settle. We hold up Duff Wells and Emory Bishop. We remember to you Betty Campbell and Sarah Trout, Doris Wilkins and Marlene Bradley. Pray for Bill Cothran and Sid Plumley. We pray for Henry Whittingham. And Lord, we pray for Albert and Hetty Wolf as, as they transition to uh, Summit Hills. Uh, be close to them. And we pray especially for Hetty today that you will uh, bring healing to her body. Lord, we know there are many that are grieving today. We pray for the families of Pat Mitchell and uh, Diane Weathers. Pray for Tina Udy's family and the Medley family. We hold up the families of Doris Cothran and Carolyn Anderson and, and Jerry Cantrell. Lord, there are others facing physical challenges. We pray for Carol Helton as she continues to recover from surgery. We pray for Steve as he transitions into temporary housing uh, after the loss of his home. Pray for Scarlett McGuire and Max Moon. Pray for Betsy Beecham's continued recovery. We hold up Jason Mosley. We join with Marty for praying for praying for his neighbor, Bobby. And we join the J&J class, holding up Valerie Whiteside and Rick's mother, Patricia Sabo. And Lord, we pray for Sid Connor, Karen's husband, as he undergoes sur surgery Wednesday. May that surgery be successful and uh, may his recovery be quick and complete. Lord, we pray for our church as we uh, seek to be prepared during this Advent season uh, for your visitation, uh, for you to visit us in a powerful and profound way. Not only when we gather together on Sunday for worship, though we do pray that we will experience your presence and power in mighty ways. But each day as we live, may we so live that we know we are walking with you and you are walking with us and that we so live that others around us may sense, uh, even when we don't have the opportunity to speak a word, may they sense that we are with you and that those people are in the presence of God because of us, if for no other reason. Lord, we desire and to be useful to you. And we pray that you will honor us uh, by expanding our usefulness as we expand our obedience to you. Lord, that is our prayer for us individually and for us as your church. And we pray together in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, I look forward to worshiping with you in the coming days.